Hello, and welcome to Panda X, the podcast series where I, Panda, who happens to be your host, will discuss and describe my previous adventures of being a Mormon. And yes, this is going to be my official coming out um, as an ex-Mormon. To be specific, I completely stopped going to church, the LDS church, uh, in 2017. I want to say 2017, I did research, extensive research, probably a good couple of months, maybe a year, maybe more. And I decided to officially resign from the church in 2018. I do not want to be affiliated with the church. I don't want to be affiliated with any of its uh, leaders. Members are a different story, okay? Because like most ex-Mormons, we understand that there are plenty of good people still in the church. They're just not, they're just not on our level. You know, they just don't, they don't see what we see. So I don't have a problem with members of the church. I really don't. I have a problem with the lies, the manipulation and the leadership. Anyway, what this podcast series, what I hope anyway, that this podcast series does is inform those who are not necessarily Mormon, those who may be investigating the church, or those who basically need more support on transitioning out of the church. So hopefully by my experiences and by my kooky wisdom, my philosophies, hopefully something will resonate with somebody and help them to move on to better things in life. Anyway, you'll find out a bunch more things about me and uh, who I used to be as an LDS member. And it's just, it's going to be an adventure for everyone, including myself. It's going to be a trip to remember all this stuff. But uh, for this first episode, I want to talk about something called mutual. And that's why I'm going to title or not going to, that's why this um, particular episode is called mutual or is it? So, Let's start off with the basics. One, if you are a Mormon, if you're a part of the LDS church, you understand mutual as being an extracurricular activity outside of church, outside of school, outside of you know, clubs, anything like that, that your child may do. Oh, I should say the ages that your are um, I believe it's age 12 to age 18 children may be doing for for fun, right? So the whole point of that is to get together, to have a wholesome activity, and to socialize. It's to socialize. And I guess those of you who are not Mormon, that would make sense too. It's just basically a gathering of all the kids in a particular ward, which I guess some people may consider a congregation, or let's just say an area. Let's just say a local area. All these kids would come together and do a fun activity. Uh, for me personally, I'll tell you, some of the greatest mutual activities I've ever had included uh, pizza making, um, like volleyball, indoor volleyball, sports like that, uh, excuse me, indoor dodgeball, arts and crafts, even though I suck at them, Um, learning, hmm, like like, kind of like a talent show, I guess. We've done talent shows before, or at least I have. Uh, Capture the flag, that's a big one. That was one of my favorite ones, Capture the flag. But anyway, there's some pretty good ideas out there for uh, mutual age children. It's not all terrible. It's not boring. Not all of it's boring. I'm Some of it is boring. But, you know, they do what they can with the limited amount of time they have the plan, the limited amount of resources they have, the limited amount of kids who are willing to participate. And by the way, you don't have to be Mormon just to participate. They, and when I say they, I mean the church encourages you to bring your non-Mormon friends to, quote, hang out, end quote. I don't don't know why I did air quotes, but I really did air quotes right now. Um, (laughs) So that's what mutual is supposed to be about. It's just supposed to be a good time. Everyone's having a wholesome time. There's no, like, talk. I mean, you can, if you have a close group of friends, you can talk about school and other crap while you're doing the activities. That's fine. But it's just... It's meant to bring unity. That's the overall arcing theme of Mutual. It's meant to bring unity. And I can see how 
it's supposed to bring unity. But, and I should probably say a disclaimer. Yeah, let's do that right now. <laughs> Even though I've a little more than five minutes in. Disclaimer. Wow, I should have done this in the very beginning. I'm so sorry. Several disclaimers. First disclaimer. I tend to curse randomly. So if you're not fond of that, regardless if you're Mormon or not, I apologize. I'm not meant to offend anybody. I'm here to educate. And I'm here to give my opinions and give as, as best a description of my adventures, of my pastime with the church as possible in order to further help others understand what it's really like to be Mormon and why I'm not a Mormon anymore. Okay, that's first disclaimer. Second disclaimer. <clears throat> I'm going to be analyzing very critically the activities and the, uh, I guess, the ongoings, the culture, if you will. I'm going to be analyzing just about everything about the church. The one thing I'm going to try to stay away from is going to be church history. Because, honestly, you can, oh man, you can literally write several books, not just one book. You can write several books on the misrepresentation of the church's history from the church. All the different lies, all the different uh, half-truths, or the, the twistings, the turn, you know, all that crap. So I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into deep doctrine either. I have learned about some deep doctrine principles, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you have a life... That's something not worth diving into. Or if you if you are genuinely curious, <laughs> just to see how ridiculous some things are, you can dive deep into it, but you may get lost. Okay, I I personally do not know all the deep doctrine. I don't know all of the church's history correctly, but I know enough that I don't want to know anymore. That's just me. So I'm going to stay away from those things. I'm trying to think if I had any other disclaimers. Oh, okay. So when it's, how do I want to say this? When I am not sure if something is a fact, I will say it is my opinion. But otherwise, everything I say for this series, especially for this episode, is, well, actually, no, just for the series, what am I talking about? Everything is going to be facts. And when it's my opinion, I'll say in my opinion, or it's my belief that, or I think Stuff like that. Okay. I, th those are, there's probably more disclaimers, but let's just move on. Okay. Defining mutual. Again, it should be for socializing. It should be for unity for, for those kids. It's, you know, to get together, have fun, be good, be like Jesus, stuff like that. All those things that they'll tell you in the church. Fair enough. I can understand that. Here comes the... God, this is this is hard, actually. Here comes the cold, hard truth about what it's really meant to do. <clears throat> if, hmm, God, <laughs> Ooh, this is actually more uncomfortable than I would imagine it to be, than, than I imagine it to be in my head. Okay, so from what I understand, the goal of the church is to always have income from its members. The biggest way that they make that income from the members is through tithing. That is a very solid fact. There are way too many references, way too many resources to point out that to be the truth, to be the ultimate goal of the church is to make money. That's the whole point. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about that right now, because it ties into what mutual is really about. Again, I may get into that. I probably will get into that later in a different episode, but I'm trying to keep on track because, oh, that, that, there's my fourth disclaimer. I tend to rant. So if you can follow my train of thought, good for you. If you can't, I'm sorry. I just, things pop into my mind all the time. This is not scripted. So I'm going to, my fourth disclaimer, I think it's the fourth anyway, is that uh, I rant slash I don't do scripts. This is all on the fly. Okay. All right, so knowing that the ultimate goal of the church is to make money, what's the best way that they can make their money? Through tithing, okay? What, just keeping those two things... Oh, damn it, I guess I should uh, 
explain what tithing is. Tithing, and they take this directly from the Bible, <clears throat> uh, King James Version of the Bible. Tithing is basically 10% of any gain which an individual receives. It's supposed to be given back to the church to help, um, well, to help out the needy, things that are necessary to, uh, I guess, upkeep the buildings that they currently own. It's basically supposed to be some type of redistribution of wealth to help those in need. There you go. That's what it's meant to be. That's what they tell you that it's meant to be for. But that's not entirely the truth. I'm not going to go into that for now. Just know, again, the ultimate goal is to make money through tithing. Going back to mutual. Now, the best way to make money through kids is not going to be through tithing. Not at all. No, no, no. The whole point of mutual. Oh, this is cringy. Okay. Whew. The whole point of mutual is to literally force both males and females, whether they be of the same ward or not, or congregation, local area, locality, it is to force these young children to get interested in one another. And when I say interested, I mean the googly eyes. I mean dating. I mean eventual marriage. And then, of course, offspring. That's the whole point of mutual. Now, a lot of people are going to say, no, that's too devious. That's that's really bad of you to say, Panda. Don't, don't say that. That's so wrong. If you look at it, though, historically, mutual's meant for children ages 12 to 18. What's the one big thing in a child's life, starting from age 12 and even earlier sometimes, all the way to age 18? It's discovering who they are. And part of discovering who they are includes puberty. It includes a, a physical change and a mental change in one soul, mind, body. These kids are... Mm, these ages of... <laughs> ah, sorry, trying to get my thoughts. There are so many things I want to say. Okay. Take a step back. At this time of development in a young adult's life, they are very susceptible, very malleable to new ideas, to new thoughts, and hormones are building up constantly so fast that they can't keep track of it. You have, I mean, you do have an idea. If you're an older listener, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about when you're between 12 and usually I think it's 14. Some boys get it later in life. Some girls get it as early as 10, I hear, which is crazy. There's just a lot of confusion going on. There's a lot of self-discovery during these years. So what the church is trying to do with Mutual and with any other program like that, I guess you could say, and that this is, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is my opinion, obviously. Uh, you know, you can take this or leave it. That's fine. But from what I understand, from what I understand, it makes more sense to force young girls and young boys to interact with each other outside of school, outside of church, doing these fun activities, but to also get them to talk to one another and to get close to one another, to date one another, to marry, and again, have offspring. What's the point of that formula, you say? If, and I'm this is a big if, if, let's say Johnny, let's say Johnny and Sarah, if Johnny and Sarah come from two well-known Mormon families in their ward. They eventually date. Johnny eventually goes on a mission, comes back and marries Sarah, and they're still very active in the church. They've been paying their tithing all these years, even though they have crappy, shitty jobs, or they're just getting allowance from their parents, even though they've been... Whatever. Whatever the case may be. If they continue to court one another past marriage to have children then there is a very high chance that those children will grow up in that church, in the LDS church, and eventually those children will start paying tithing from their jobs that they get. And so the cycle continues. The church is not, it's not very dumb. <laughs> These, the leaders, oh man, 
it's very manipulative. I really want to talk about mutual first because I feel like even though the manipulation doesn't begin there, I feel like the manipulation is more uh, cemented during those years of development for children because it, it's a kind of a make it or break it thing. By the time you hit 18 years old, you're almost, I, I would, okay, this is my opinion now. I would say you're about 75 to 80% set in your ways when you're 18. There's very little room for, um, for changing one's mind, for adapting new personalities or personality, whatever, uh, new moralities, moral choices, choices in general. It's, it's very difficult for someone to change completely to do like a 180 after they're 18. It's very difficult. It's possible. Don't get me wrong. It's possible. But still, the church wants to solidify that position of, oh, you're a, you are an active member who's going to get married to another active member, you both pay tithing already. That's great. Now, get married, have children, raise them the same way you were raised, so that way we can get their money that they're going to make in the future. And thus, the church has obtained its goal. It's it's a very vicious cycle. Very, very vicious. And it pains me to say this because I grew up almost all my life a member i'm 30 oh man i'm gonna be 32 in a month (laughs) ah lame so uh the thing is i i was baptized when i was eight years old i didn't have much family going many family members going to the church and if i did they were always in different cities so i never got to really hang out with them at church i did make a lot of friends in church oh by the way i should say i'm an only child so i didn't have i didn't have the typical mormon family of mom dad two brothers one sister or like two brothers three sisters or like five sisters one brother you know some crazy ass amount of children right i never had that it was just me and everyone was always surprised well, I'm not, whatever, I'll just say my name. They're like, Brandon, how did you go this far, man? How did you get in all these different positions? How do you do it? How do you stay true? How? I'm like, dude, I don't know. It just, it kind of just grows on me. And that's the thing. That's what the church does. It grows on you. So during, going back to mutual, because I'm trying to keep on topic as best I can. Going back to mutual, for my own personal experiences, mutual was very fun. Um... I, I got to, so I did get to socialize a lot more with my peers who went to the same ward building as I did, but there was a lot of times where I didn't always socialize with them because I found them weird or they had their own group or I had my own group or, you know, there's several reasons to say why I didn't socialize, but ultimately I didn't choose anybody from the church to marry. I married a, a non-member. And, uh, thank God, thank God for me. Wow. I, I can't tell you how much of a uh, bullet I dodged by marrying a non-member. But during those times, I was, I mean, I was a little confused about life. Definitely. Um, I was a little bit confused about the changing, (laughs) the changes happening in my body (laughs) as most of us were. But I kept it under wraps because the church helped me keep it under wraps. I didn't go crazy. I didn't have premarital sex during those years. I didn't. I mean, I had girlfriends. Some were members. Some were not. You know, I was a little bit of a bad boy. <laughs> but um, I was very respectful to people and I wasn't a douche. I didn't I didn't act like an asshole. Right. So that that is one thing I'll say is that the church, even though. It is highly manipulative of everyone in all aspects. There are some very good, positive things that come from church teachings. That's just how it is. Okay, so with mutual, though, again, it's a very weird, vicious cycle, and I don't know how they're handling it now because COVID's rampant. Rampant? Rampant. Damn, I I can't speak. Okay. Even though COVID is very abundant and it is not going away anytime soon, I don't know how they're handling this because it would be, you would think it would be via 
Zoom calls or Google Meets or Skype, whatever, right? But it kind of ruins their plan, really, because how else are the youth, that's what they call them, the youth, by the way, how are the youth supposed to socialize, get interested in one another, and eventually marry, have babies, and give the church back tithing? It's a very great investment, actually, on the church to be doing, to have that cycle. And a lot of people do not realize this, because all they're thinking is, oh, little Jimmy out here is starting to get to know uh, his peers at church, so that way it will be less awkward when we go, so that way he'll want to go more. See, I didn't even think about that. Holy crap! Here I am doing this. I thought I did. Oh, I thought I did enough research. I thought I remembered enough instances of my own experiences, but I didn't even think about that. Here's another side effect to mutual. The more you socialize with the children who you see going to church every Sunday, the more, and then, and then once you get to f- befriend them and you become friends or, or good acquaintances, at least it gets less scary to go to church. That's how they get you to continually be an active member. The more active you are as a member, the more time you're giving to falsehoods. The more money you're spending that you don't need to be spending. It's it's so messed up. Like, it pisses me off. Okay. That was an unintentional side effect I didn't even think about. Until I was actually talking about it. Isn't that crazy? And just a side note, because I I don't want to keep these episodes too long. I'm thinking anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes. And I I pretty much have, um, I I should say, I am uh, very happy with what I talked about tonight. I'm doing this at night, by the way, because I have a full-time job. So I'm, I'm happy with my message I got across. But... I will say that talking openly about these things and really pondering it like they tell you to do, they, they tell you to pon- to search, ponder, and pray. Oh, man. Ah, stupid little mantras like that. Okay. If you seriously, though, ponder and really observe the different activities that the church asks you to participate in, and they ultimately guilt you into participating in you will see you will recognize how manipulative of a a religion of an organization this is anyway all i'm saying is mutual is dangerous if you really like somebody and you want to get to know them intimately like that i don't think it's the right time to do that at a young age. I don't think it's fair to press upon young minds like that to, to groom them because that's what, that's what it is. It's grooming the young children to stay in the church always and to have kids. It's like saying this, it's going to be weird to say this, especially if you had known nothing about the church, but it's like saying to the members, Hey, if you're not married and you don't have at least one child by the time you're 30, we're going to kind of shun you because you kind of failed. And the whole point of the church is to is to marry and to go into the celestial kingdom. And I'm just giving you little tidbits of other stuff I may cover later. But th- the whole point is to marry. Is to, whoa, whoa, wait. <laughs> let, let me get this completely straight. <laughs> Pun intended. The whole point is to have a man and a woman make a family with a with an abundance of children, preferably two or more. Def no, actually not preferably, definitely two or more. Let's let's try, you know, three, six, ten. Make as many children as you can, so that way we, the church, can take their money later. So that we, the church, can still be profitable. So that we the church can still manipulate your children to have more children so that we can take their money and be more profitable. And that is one way just by mutual. That is one God damn re- <clears throat> manipulative activity that they use to allow that vicious cycle to continue on through decades. 
Again, I don't know how they're handling it now because of COVID, but it's scary. So if anything else, and you know what, I'm just going to end the same way that I always, that, hmm, I'm going to end by saying, please be observant. Please question any doubt you may have, because if you have any doubt over anything, then it's valid because it's from you. Don't question other people's doubts. That's fine for them to have their own opinion and and to do their own research and to feel a certain way about certain things. But you need to go do the work yourself because you're you're not going to find out anything if you just take my word for it. Just take some time and really observe the world around you. Observe what's going on and you'll find your way. I'm very positive that someone out there is going to listen to this and they're going to say, you know what, Panda, you're right. Thank you for telling me to just take my time, observe, and act. Because that's, honestly, because that's what I did. I'm just going to tell you right now. It took me several years. Several years. And, by the way, I have spent more than $10,000 in tithing. I'm very pissed off that I'm not getting that back. Okay? Very pissed. But anyway, that's just a side note. It took me. I was a member in 1997, 20 years to stop going. Wait, is that 20? Yeah, 20 years. 20 years to stop going and about a year or so of research to realize that I've been duped all that time. Don't be like me. Be observant. Be patient. Do some research and then act on what you find. That's all I'm saying. Uh, That's going to be it for this... um, yeah, for this episode of Panda X. It sounds really cool. I like it. <laughs> um, you know, I've decided that uh, I want to get back to podcasting. So I'm going to try to do one, maybe two episodes per week, but at least one a week. And I will publish this on Mondays. So that way everyone can have, you know, they can start off their week on a good note by listening to me and my silly adventures. And trust me. This is a very serious podcast, but I'm a very lighthearted person. So you're going to hear some jokes. You're going to hear some weird, silly adventures. Um, I'm not going to use anyone's personal names unless I ask permission. You know, I'm, I, I'm going to be respectful. And I, and again, if you're offended by what I'm saying, then that's on you because I'm just, it's just what I feel. All right. It's just what I feel. So until next time, thank you all so much for listening to Panda X. I am your host, Panda, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.